there's the light here. This conversation, that's kind of appropriate, is about the death phase or the life, death, life nature. The death phase is just as important as the life phase, even though most of us would say we were leaning toward life. We want life. We don't want death. We want life. Okay, but all life begins with a death of some kind. When your mother bore you, she was dying to her old self. She was going through a death process. A birthing process is a shedding also. She's shedding the pregnant self. She's shedding the the whole womb space, the placenta. And if it's her first time being a mother, she is dying to her single woman self and becoming a mother. So in the same way that all new things begin, they come at, after a death. So I like to think of death as the initiator of change and of life. And if we can begin to shift our awareness that way, instead of like the scary, spooky thing that we, we don't want to have anything to do with, then we'll actually find that death is a great supporter of life. And it's only when we fear death and we resist death and we turn from death that death tries to get our attention in one way or another so that we will grow this relationship. So there, in some cultures, lady death is honored as the wise one as the skeleton woman, she of the bones, la loba. There's many names across the world in the storybooks and so forth, and even depicted in our fairy tales, where what it really is doing is telling a story of our psyche. And what happens when we go through an awakening process is there is a death process too. There is a releasing of an old paradigm, which is why we have the belief detox because there is a death process going on and why we have any detox and why we have crises moments in our awakening where we know we must shed things even our chakras blowing out all their debris is a death process so i like to think of the challenge is to befriend death to make death your companion that way you are living with your opposite and you are able to fully be life and alive and in your life force. And when death is sort of buddied up with you, then you do not fear death. You're like, yeah, we're just hanging out together. Death is really like the backside of life, the shadow of life. And the goal is to be integrated, to have both the light and the dark working together as one reality in a way that uh, with an evolved perspective of death, I think we can actually avoid feeling some of the depth of our tragedy. And I, I say that because tragedy is actually part of why we came here to experience the full range of human emotion the hardest part is being emotionally attached and not understanding. So if our very existence is dependent on a thing and it dies or goes away, it shatters our existence. It makes us feel very weak and vulnerable and like something has been taken from us. But if we understand that that's a desirable condition, that in that stripping down, oh, we're being cleared out for something new, we can have a little bit different perspective on, oh, when this is happening to us, wow, life is preparing me for a great change. Life is bestowing a massive blessing on me, even though, of course, it doesn't look like it. But with eyes to perceive, with ears to hear, we can begin to see that death isn't something to be feared, isn't something to run away from, isn't something to try to prevent, because we are going through many deaths all the time. Cells are dying every day. We're taking an inhale and an exhale breath. That's a mini death. 
we're going to sleep and we're waking up every night and morning, that's a mini death. So when we can befriend death and take note of the deaths that are transformations in our life from one phase to another, this is the job of Kundalini is to continually initiate us through the life, death, life nature to continue to expand to more and more. And it is only through the owning and loving and honoring of the shadows too that we truly make it to the next level of awareness so an exercise that I challenge you with is to if you're going through a death process maybe write an obituary for yourself I know you're not physically dead or dying but this is a good time to do this because it's acknowledging like an old part of yourself ready to die and in the process of dying. And so in order to retain the thread of your life to move forward into something new, you have to acknowledge and release some part of you that's shedding. So the practice of mourning your own old self transition is a powerful practice. It's like having a little funeral for that part of you. You maybe even wear a black veil or wear black or be in silence for a day while you mourn the old you that's dying. The old condition that's dying, the old relationship, the old whatever. Even if you're just shifting financial, that can feel like a major death too, where you're coming out of one paradigm into another. That transition period is the place to honor the death process because that precedes the birthing of the new. Okay? So writing yourself this obituary, write all the things you loved about yourself in that old way, all the things that brought you to this point in gratitude, having this little honoring ceremony and knowing that part of you can now be released for this new part of you to come forward. And it's a very mentally liberating process, emotionally liberating process that gives us space to really feel how that death process is feeding the life nature. So, As far as life force management and understanding how life force moves, it's important to know that bursts of new insight and new life energy and new expanded territory of mind is not alone in this process, that it's side by side with this shedding and this dying and this death process. So the true initiate is aware of both and can stand at that threshold in honor. Okay, I hope this has been helpful.